208. That was pink right there with Raise Your Glass. Senior Emma Kellen Carr here, and also Senior Emma Rebecca Gager. Who, who's the special gentleman we have in the studio with us right now? Yeah, very, very excited about this. We have celebrity chef Robert Irvine here in the studio. Chef, welcome. What's up? How's everybody doing? <laughs> <laughs> Doing really good, Chef. Thank you. So I'm very excited to meet you. Obviously, I've been watching you on TV, and uh, you know, I was like, "All right." So this very, very, uh, you know, impressive TV chef is coming. I'm really excited about this. And you've had a lot of successes in your career, but the thing that really grabbed my attention was you actually started cooking in the military. Yes, I'm. A, I'm actually a Navy cook, um, attached to uh, Marine Corps and uh, naval warships and various other things. So yeah, I did almost 14 years in the military. So the military is very close to my heart. Um, and that's why we're here with the USO uh, doing these tours, you know. Uh, just came here literally an hour and a half ago from Okinawa, uh, spending th four days there and uh, getting to meet and greet and uh, work out with a lot of people, a lot of fun shows. You can definitely tell you've been working out. <laughs> I didn't work out today, me and you, yeah. but you look at the size of you. Uh, what do you look, mean, people for breakfast? Hey, listen, Chef, I, I, I'm impressed, brother. Shh. I'm impressed. You're busting out of that uniform. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to look at it. He said, he said I'm going to take my shirt off, and I was like, oh, man, Chef, well, look, you got some guns here. Uh, yeah, Really, honestly, yes. Now, Chef, real fast, uh, this sort of grabbed my attention. You joined the Navy very young. Fifteen and a half years old. Uh, in England, it's kind of it's pretty much like you do junior leaders in the United States. Uh, I joined the Navy, and it's funny because I'm not the smartest guy in the pack. You know, when I went to when I went to school, I hated it, but uh, I did my entrance exam at the recruitment office. Uh, one in English uh, to five, one being the highest, five being the lowest, and the same in maths, and I got five five. So I'm not that smart, right? Um, but hey. Uh, I was a cook for many years. I'm still a cook and, and still doing the military thing. Mm -hmm. And you and actually, as a young Navy cook, you were cooking for very high up people. I, I know you were on the, the Royal Yacht. Yeah, I've done the Royal Yacht. Uh, every head of state there is in the free world, um, the royal family, uh, presidents, kings, queens. Um, so, yeah, I, you know, it's something the military gives you that, it, that is very special that you cannot get outside, and that's leadership. Absolutely. Leadership, loyalty, dignity, honor, respect, teamwork, all those things that you guys know uh, is very hard to find outside in, the, in, in, the, in our industry. Right. So, so would you say that your military service, you know, then the formative experiences when you were young has sort of parlayed into uh, your success? I mean, you've been totally. all over the world. Totally. Uh, you know, the military is, is the building block. It's like when you, you work out, right? You know, the right amino acids, the, the body needs building blocks to build muscle. The military is the basis uh, of my success, hands down. Can I cook for five people? Uh, we just finished with the President of the United States. We'll be back there soon. I cook in Afghanistan for 5,000 at a time. Uh, it really does set you up for success. Okay, so speaking of all of the success, you're a very, very busy guy. You've got lots, lots going on, but you always take time. I know you've gone down range. I know you've gone to uh, aircraft carriers at sea. So, so what drives you to take that extra time and go around the world? You know, I, I, I'm very blessed. Uh, my whole team is made up of former military guys. You have a former military, uh, uh, sorry, former Marine. Uh, guy behind me, Dave Longstaff, 30 years, just retired, uh, Army Food Advisor. Uh, we have a Navy guy. Uh, it's just something that I feel our, our company, our time, uh, has to give back to those men and women that serve our nation, wear the cloth of the nation, because they give so much, and their families. Uh, it's not um, something I take very lightly. You know, we go all over the world, you said, we're Afghanistan and, and Abu Dhabi and Honduras and Italy, and um, Japan was the next one. And uh, <laughs> I tell you, we've had an amazing, amazing trip, and if it wasn't for the great folks at the USO. And I got to tell you, uh, I've always admired them, but having been the first one in 2015 to come on tour with the USO, amazing group of people. Do you know, on average, 30,000 random acts of kindness every day while we're doing this that go on from volunteers to serve our military families. That's pretty awesome. Absolutely. That doesn't really surprise me at all. I, and honestly, you've taken a step beyond your trips to visit the troops and uh, at deployed locations and overseas. You've actually gone ahead and made a foundation. Could you tell us about that, please? Yeah, we have the Robert Irvine Foundation, a 501c3, that is dedicated to military families, kids with cancer, and Make-A-Wish Foundation. Um, giving back, uh, we have products, uh, food products, clothing products, TV products, all those products uh, given to my foundation so we can actually give and support those families. Garrison East and I are, are um, partners on the Invincible Spirit Festivals that we do. Last year, I think 122,000 wounded warriors and caregivers 
uh, that we fed and Gary played. Um, 28 homes were built last year wow. uh, for severely handicapped warriors. So it's, it's a big deal for us. And my whole team, let me tell you, Justin, the guy sitting in the corner, <laughs> He, d he likes to work out, but not at 5.30 in the morning with, a, with, uh, with 450 CBs. I'm yeah. not a morning workout guy either. I, I can't do the mornings. No, he, he's shaking his head, yeah. It's a slow start in the morning for me. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's, so it's cool. Well, speaking of working out, I mean, I know you're passionate about fitness and nutrition, and you've said that, you know, good, good food can bring people together. You published a, a new book last year. So what's the vision behind this new direction into, uh, like, fitness and nutrition? I've always been into into fitness uh, since I was in the military. You know, it, it's kind of given to you and you go with it. Absolutely. Um, mm -hmm. But I truly believe that food is a, is a medium that we can actually teach kids about where food comes from, which in then turn gives uh, a bonding moment with families. I want kids to cook with their families. I want the families to make a mess. You know, my mother used to say to me, don't, <laughs> don't play with your food. I want you to play with your food. I want you to understand where it comes from. I want you to understand nutrition. Um, and it's kind of a natural progression. We have a daytime talk show uh, going to happen very soon. We start filming in March. All about conflict resolution, health, fitness, and wellness. And I think that's the next. We're getting smarter as human beings about what we eat. It's okay to indulge, but it's also, you know, we've got to watch what we eat. Um, so, yeah, I think it's a natural next kind of thing for me. I think the one thing you got to say is when you're talking about the balance between physic, uh, you know, physical fitness and then uh, nutrition, you definitely found that balance and that's the reason why Men's Fitness honored you as one of the 25 fittest guys <laughs> in America. <laughs> and and yeah, it shows. It goes to show. Well, we just It's so funny. We just shot the uh, cover of Train Magazine. It comes out in February. Uh, my wife is a professional athlete, um, a wrestler. Um, it's just kind of, it's cool. <laughs> Yeah, you think of a big, like, muscular girl. She's very dainty, but, uh, uh, yeah, it's fun. That's pretty cool to say. My wife's a professional wrestler. Like, I mean, yeah, she, very few people can really say that, <laughs> honestly, if you think about it. Yeah, but when I show you, she's actually would normally be with us, but uh, she's actually filming in New York City right now. Oh, I follow wrestling. I know, oh, Gail, cool. I know Gail Kim. Okay, yeah. You know, WWE yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, All TNA. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I like, I like wrestling, so... Uh, yeah, you got you a good one. How did that? How did that even come about? Uh, Dinner Impossible. I was actually doing a show with WWE in uh, Los Los Angeles. Their SummerSlam. She was one of my assistants during that 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 mission, and um, she wore this kind of skirt, well, dress, and <laughs> you know, the rest is history. I married her. <laughs> all right. Well, she married me. I don't know. <laughs> she was like, "All right, there, there's something." I didn't know I married there. up, but it's okay. <laughs> Who can do more push-ups? You got her beat still? I got her beat. You got her beat? Okay. But Just, I let her think she can. It, it, you know what? You, you it's got all it right. about balance. You got it down. <laughs> you got it down. All right, Chef. Well, speaking of your TV show, you've got Restaurant Impossible. It's going into its 10th season on Food Network. Actually, it's 11th season 11th right season. now. Yeah, we're Fantastic. actually uh, uh, into our 11th. In fact, tomorrow when we head home, the next day I actually go to uh, start filming. So that oh, should be wow. fun. wow. All right. Well, I was watching it. I was watching it last night, and um, I was like, man. You are, you're tough. You get in there and you, you tell these people, you know, what's what, and you don't mess around with it. And, um, you know, is that what people can expect with your show tonight at, at the Yakota E-Club? Are you well, going to set wanna, people I'm straight? I'm going to, first of all, tell you that <laughs> I'm a military person. I have 36 hours, which is real time, $10,000 to fix somebody's life, real people, real problems, mm -hmm. uh, and I don't have time to mess about. It's no different to doing a mission. And you backtrack to figure out the steps to make that mission. Tonight, now here's something really exciting. You know, um, I don't know. Tonight is something very unique because the team behind me actually put the show on. And I just show up. I have no knowledge about what's going to go on. Uh, the audience picks what I do based on a, a series of things. Um, I'm very into the audience. And um, it's their time, my crew's time, to get me back. Wow. And trust me, there's a guy out <laughs> shopping right now, and I don't know what he's buying or what he's doing. Um, all I can tell you is it's a multi-sensory uh, experience. It's almost like a variety show. Wow. Okay. With cooking in it. With food. Uh, yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. The, the one thing I, I saw in, like in 2013 when you did the tour to Afghanistan, you did a Meals Ready to Eat, an MRE yes. competition. Yeah. How, how does that work? <laughs> it was so funny because they're all, all, you know, we hit five uh, uh, fobs and, and did an awful lot of stuff that, that you can't normally get to, thanks to, to Dave behind me uh, <laughs> and General Abrams and a few other people. But 
I want to do something fun. And one thing that we all hate, if you're in the military, is, is MREs. Um, but I wanted to do something that would help them in the field. Because normally we strip the rations, we take what we want out of them, we throw the rest out. Absolutely. Yes. Um, so I said, well, listen, I'm going to show you what you can actually do with these MREs that you don't know what to do with first. So I did a demonstration. Then I picked three teams. It was uh, Army against um, then the Air Force and the Marines. Um, and strategically placed these MREs in a triangle around uh, the rest of the folks that were there. And then they had to run, scavenge in the dark, find them, and then, then using, uh, and I only used a pen and a spoon. <laughs> okay. A plastic spoon and a pen that you would have in the field. Sure. And I made mooses and used the bags to shake. The, I made some amazing stuff, which was funny, um, with an MRE. You don't think of it. But, uh, in fact, yesterday um, with the 4th Marines, they did the same thing. They sent me an MRE. Every, every two minutes, they had a piece of an MRE for me to make a dish with outside of the ingredients I had. I had to wow. use it. Twizzlers. Um, <laughs> cheese, <laughs> cheese stick, you know, all that. It was ridiculous, but we did it, and it was really good. All right, throw wow. some Tabasco sauce on that. <laughs> <laughs> so there was no Tabasco. Right. They didn't pick Tabasco. <laughs> well, all right. It was a graham cracker, uh, uh, cheese spread, mm. Twizzlers. What else was it? Air pretzels, pr wasabi pretzels. Wasabi pretzels. Yeah. Ooh, with yeah. Twizzlers. Mm. That is, hmm. Chef, I'd be interested to, to try that. Just <laughs> Just to see. It's oh, an apple sauce. <laughs> oh, applesauce, which would make it all good, right? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> all right, Chef. We know it is your last day um, here. It's your last show in Japan, and we definitely thank you for your time. I know you're on sort of a, a time schedule, so we'll let you go. But thank you so much for coming in. You are so welcome. I just want to say a big shout-out to all the people listening. Thank you all, uh, spouses, for your service and uh, active duty guys and girls. Um, come out to the show. It's kid-friendly. You will have a lot of fun for two hours. And... Uh, a big shout out for the USO, uh, who make those thirty to fifty thousand uh, random acts of kindness every day, so that they can take care of you. And the reason they do it is because they love the troops and they love all the families. So and that's thank going you. on tonight at Yakota's Enlisted Club at six thirty. Yeah, so show on up. It's going to be a really great show. I've heard great things about it, Chef. Thank you again. Take care. Make sure you're not wearing your jacket. <laughs>